Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series, Philosophical Ponderings, where we take a look at 10 games with some deep philosophical meaning or storyline behind them. And today we're taking a look at The Witness, a 2018 puzzle game, which is unlike anything I've ever played before, because the entire game is just one giant puzzle. And without spoiling too much about it, it is unlike anything I've ever played in that particular genre. But the reason I included it on this playlist is that the game does things with storytelling that are unlike a lot of other games. You have audio logs of recordings, and that's something we've seen in gaming for a very long time, probably most famously done in the original Bioshock where you get those recordings, or at least that's what I think of when I think of it. But this game in and of itself is one big learning experience. There are no real tutorials. The game doesn't hold your hand completely. It gives you just enough information to be able to understand what the function of the puzzle is without giving away so much that you feel like it's completing it for you. And it feels like kind of the natural evolution of how humans actually learn, where our experiences and our accumulated knowledge go and inform how we actually view the world and how we examine things. And the game does an excellent job of basically allowing you to explore and to learn almost in a childlike nature to the point where you become more and more intelligent at what it's asking you to do. And suddenly you feel like you've learned so much that the original puzzles in the game seem completely simple when you may have struggled on them but as you get deeper into the game everything becomes harder and harder until you get the reveal that there's a deeper second layer to the game that you never realized you were playing or even experiencing until maybe 20 or 30 hours in and i will say i looked at my steam i played this game for 110 hours with my wife and we definitely didn't even solve all the puzzles i think we were short about 14 but as far as the game itself is concerned, it's absolutely beautiful. It uses this very poppy color, almost cell-shaded, you know, flat texture to look to it. But everything, it looks natural enough, but yet everything's slightly strange to the point where you're not sure what's going on. And as you get out of the original area, you encounter a very difficult puzzle. And the game's basically telling you, you don't know how to solve this yet. But remember it because it's going to become important. But as you walk down the path, the game kind of holds your hand and brings you to an area that starts showing you some of the mechanics of how you may solve the puzzle. And you're going to see here, we need to isolate colors. Black must be in its own section, and white must be in its own section. And the game is basically giving you just enough information, and I show you there what goes wrong, that you're able to solve things and better learn and understand what's actually happening in the game. But beyond the basic puzzle mechanic, and then the deeper puzzle mechanic that I'll show in a little bit, it has this really interesting way that it works in which it actually has theaters that present clips of movies. It has audio logs with recordings of Buddha with B.F. Skinner. And it's interesting that they chose Skinner quotes and audio recordings in this game. Because if you're not familiar with him, he was a behavioralist and psychologist that kind of tried to break down how the human mind actually works. He had a theory that free will was an illusion and basically all our actions are dictated on previous actions or guidances. And that's exactly what we're seeing in the gameplay here. Everything that we're doing is informed by a previous action or learn response that we have had in the game as it teaches us how to solve puzzles. So are we going through this world on our own free will or are we basically following a preset path that the game designer or the story has given us. And that's something about The Witness that I think is really interesting is that it doesn't give you the answer to the story questions. It just gives you different information, different quotes for you to be able to kind of inform what you think about the game. But with that kind of lack of free will, learned behavior response, we instinctually want to solve these puzzles. We want to go through the world and understand how it functions and how we can, air quotes, beat the game. And I think that really goes and drives towards those quotes from Skinner where we don't have free will. The game designer has given us a goal, which is beating the game, solving the puzzles, and we're going to be spending our time trying to do that, even if we're not really sure why. And I will say that this game's conclusion or ending leaves a not a lot to be desired, but a lot open-ended. It's not going to answer questions for you. You're going to have to answer them yourself or basically think how you would want to solve the story. But as we get further into the game here, you can see that the puzzles get incredibly deeper. What you did at the beginning seems like a very childlike feat compared to some of the mind-bending actions you need to take to solve puzzles later in the game because they become incredibly complex yet you naturally learn them and you feel like you're evolving with the game as the game evolves 
and now we're taking a hike up to the top of the mountain and the game does give you in the very beginning a glimpse of the mountain and even if it doesn't tell you as much you know that the ending or where you need to go is at the top and now that we're at the top here you can see all those different laser beams from different areas of the game we've solved and all of a sudden you can go into the inner workings of the game kind of like take a peek behind but weirdly you see this puzzle here that's incredibly easy to complete all you do is draw to the end of the line and you're not sure why it's there what you're going to realize is as you shift slightly right the entire time this game has had a second metagame underneath it where there's environmental puzzles to solve clouds may move to complete a puzzle sequence something may be in the shadow something may be in the environment but looking for circles the entire time you think it's just on the panels to solve but you come to find out very quickly that as you've beaten the game, or if you think you have, when you get to the top of the mountain, there's probably 50% more to go. And that's one of the most incredible revelations in gaming, I think right up there, with Andrew Ryan and Jack Ryan being father and son. But at the surface, this game is an outstanding puzzle game. It'll make you think in ways that you haven't before. Spatial awareness, color, pretty much every sense you could possibly imagine having will be employed in solving this game. But then it has that whole metagame underneath it with all these philosophical quotes, with all these different films you can watch. In the end, it literally has a 45-minute film with a puzzle in it that you have to watch from the start to the finish that basically is talking about someone's personal philosophy as a philosopher. So it's almost like the designers hid a philosophy course in a video game and then hid a secondary video game finding the environmental puzzles underneath the primary video game, which was just solving the panels. But going back to the origins of the game, we're starting over again because there is a puzzle or a secret in the beginning that is absolutely mind-blowing once you've actually completed the game. Because you don't realize when you first come out of the cave on your first playthrough that there are environmental puzzles. You think your goal is to solve what's on the panel and progress forward. But as you come out on a second playthrough, you're going to notice something in this little exit gate right here. You see that there's a sun in the sky, and that's going to be able to draw a line if you position yourself in the proper place and spatial awareness being a huge component of this game but if you take a look up you see the sun and that line and if you put them together suddenly you're able to solve a puzzle that you never knew existed and that kind of brings you into the inner workings of the game for lack of a better term suddenly a portal opens up and we're able to go inside and take a look at this hotel which within the game it looks like the same environment but it feels completely different, and something about it is just not off, but unlike what you'd see before. But you have a little audio recording here that you can listen to. I don't want to spoil too much of it because examining the audio logs and watching the films is such a huge component of this game that it is something that you should experience yourself. But if you enjoy puzzle games, if you like them, I can't recommend this game highly enough. It's one of the best puzzle games I've played in many years, and I'm still waiting for something to come out to kind of rival it or give me the same feeling of learning and understanding and being able to feel like part of a world that this game gave us. So I doubt we'll ever see a witness too. I definitely think it was a one-off, but you get a little look at kind of the production art here and everything going on. But it is a very interesting game that kind of wears, you know, its story on its sleeve, but also hides it at the same time. But it is just kind of an examination of free will versus determinism and whether or not the actions you're taking are your own or if you're being guided by an unseen hand through the story and through the world. Because something happened in the world for the designers of the world itself to have had to have made this experience for the player character and without revealing too much. It makes you think of what might have actually happened in the world that humanity felt like they had to kind of store this knowledge away for someone to experience. And as we climb further up this hotel tower, we suddenly get further in the sky and you can see a little circle in the distance, another puzzle to solve. And I think that is what the game does incredibly well, is that it changes your expectations. When you think you finally have a handle on what might be going on, it upends the table and suddenly what you think you knew isn't true anymore and you realize that you've kind of peeled back to another layer of understanding of what the game wants you to do. But absolutely, go out and play this game. It's available on Steam. I believe it's on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It's worth the money and I don't even think it's going for that much right now, especially if you complete the game 100%. 
you know, maybe I'm not the brightest person in the world with puzzles. My wife's better than I am, but I played this for a hundred hours. So your money versus time, you're going to get a lot out of it. But as we come through this little secret, all of a sudden we open up into something that we're not expecting. And I don't want to spoil it too much, but you'll see that it is the real world. And there might be a meta puzzle in here. I don't know. People have tried to solve it. No one's quite sure exactly what this means. But short of that, thanks so much for watching. We'll be back on Friday and Sunday with more episodes and Tuesday another episode in Philosophical Ponderings. And if you could do a huge favor, go down below and hit like and subscribe. It definitely helps us out because it takes a lot of time to make each one of these episodes. Short of that, we hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time. Enjoy this little clip. Bye-bye.